I'm uh, really picking up from from uh, from the minister and from from Carol's comments about uh, the opportunities which uh, activity-based funding give to to actually take us deep into understanding uh, how we uh, deliver our healthcare services and how we can improve those services for patients. I'll put right on the table, I am not an, uh, I'm not a, an ABF or case mix evangelist. Um, uh, it is just a very useful tool for making uh, our health system funding decisions and delivery decisions much more transparent. Critically, uh, activity-based funder is a major reform driver for better patient care, and that's why it f is featuring in, featuring in reform agendas globally, as we all try to work out how to design our health systems for the 21st century. Uh, it's, we've got Christine Bennett here with us today in, in her chair capacity but, uh, of one of uh, the networks, but, but as uh, chair of the National Health and Hospital Reform Commission, the commission uh, focused on activity-based funding as a, as a key element of, of the hosp public hospital reform side of the agenda uh, because of its capacity to, to bring change in our system in terms of how, how we think about uh, what we pay for, uh, what we deliver, how we organise that care and is it the right care. Globally, prospective case payment, which is a more generic term for what in this country we're calling activity-based funding, it's had lots of different names, um, is used to fund hospitals in, in over 20 countries or 70% of the uh, OECD. And in fact, a large number of those countries, more than half actually purchase the Australian DRG system for the inpatient component to do it. Countries like Germany and, uh, and Ireland, others like the UK developed, developed their own models. And, the most, and often it gets talked about that it's all about efficiency, and it's not really. Um, uh, yes, uh, whether we're doing things efficiently in terms of cost um, is, is an element that, that, that this drives when you compare the performance of, of different uh, hospitals or, or services. But the most critical thing about it and why it's very, very, very key to, to what we need to achieve in, a, in our devolved uh, uh, model is, uh, is that it gives the transparency which, which enables local planning and decision making, as well as the transparency that allows, uh, from a whole of state point of view, to, to actually work out where we're going with our health system. Uh, are we getting it right? What are the gaps? Um, uh, what are the access issues? Have we got the right models of care? Um, the, um, I've just put up a few thoughts about transparency there, this idea that what it shifts is instead of funding being tied to to um, to the historical um, uh, uh, historically to organisations that we're actually now funding the services that that those organisations and providers provide. The Right Honourable Alan Milburn, who was Secretary of State for Health in the Blair government and conducted the uh, and led the the Blair government health reforms uh, a few years back describe this as, uh, as moving from paying providers for who they are to what they achieve. And it is a very important, a very important shift. And I'll explain it in very concrete terms to you um, as, as we go through this presentation. Uh, the benchmark, when, when you have a look at sort of nationally or statewide normative pricing and then look at your own health service and see whether you cost more or less, uh, it, it raises the questions of, of, well, why is that? And the answers can, as I say, answers can be efficiency. But they're also as to, to whether we're actually uh, have got the right care uh, in the right place uh, for the patient at, at the right time. It will also highlight gaps. One of the first things we, note, we will notice when we make our, our hospital budgets absolutely transparent as to what, what, what they're providing rather than what funding the, the institution is receiving uh, is, is we'll find huge diversity in, in patterns of care, huge diversity in even what, what uh, fundamental uh, services are delivered. I'll just use one, one example in terms of if you look around the state, the enormous patchiness of the availability um, of uh, home-based um, palliative care, for example, uh, is not something you can routinely access uh, around this state. Um, and that then the fu and the funding model will take you there to 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 one be able to observe that and then to ask well well what is the right model of care how do we direct resources to the to the the right pattern of services. 
people highlight that it can um, that it can uh, drive us towards a focus on volumes and certainly um, and throughput for throughput's sake. And, uh, and in terms of the structure within the national reforms, we have to be very, very careful that, that, um, that those incentives don't come into play. But if you can actually approach the design of your overall funding model in the right way, then the, the, the track record of uh, introducing these models is that, uh, that you, you can um, do it in a framework that gets you to focus uh, on, your, on your outputs firstly, and then from outputs to outcomes. Because to answer the questions of why have we got that service configuration, why does it cost what it costs, will take you to the fundamental issues of have we got the right care.